In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is troubled. This is one of the lines that we heard the deacon read in the gospel passage this morning, just a moment ago. It is the line, the answer that the paralytic gave to Jesus Christ. And it makes me wonder, where was the helpful man that the paralytic needed? From this passage in the Gospel of John, we learn that there is a source of healing for people who are suffering even with very severe lifelong afflictions. That's the just of it. However, the healing isn't accessible to those who are suffering unless others who are well and healthy willingly to intervene. Are there present willingly to intervene to bring those who are ill to the source of healing? The paralytic, the ill man in this gospel reading, had nobody to bring him to the sheep gate pool, to the source of healing. He needed somebody else. He needed someone's help. He was dependent on someone else. Enter stage Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus comes to heal this man by way of a miracle, right? Simply by speaking to him and telling him to pick up his pallet and to walk. Something he was not able to do up until that point. Now he healed him by way of a miracle because he is truly and fully God. But let's not forget that when Jesus approached this man lying on his pallet without a person to attend to his needs, when Jesus approached him, when he entered the scene, Jesus just came in as a man. Because he was truly and fully man. And he was present there as truly and fully man. Further, when the you know, now healed man, healed paralytic, was questioned, remember what he answered? That man who healed me told me to pick up my pallet and walk. He said, the man. He did not recognize Jesus as God. Having healed him, he recognized him only as a man who was able, by way of some miracle, to heal his brokenness of the body and make him whole. So you see, my dear friends, Jesus came as a man and offered to be helpful to the paralytic. Truthfully, this very simple story of Jesus' healing reflects actually the larger story of Jesus Christ's birth into the material world. It reflects the fact, the very fact, that God became man to do what we either were not able to do, or worse, what we are not willing to do. On the one hand, this passage once again assures us that God's permanent presence in our lives is real. Jesus is always ready and willing to help us. God, the Holy Spirit, is always here ready to complete that upon which we fall short. But on the other hand, this same passage points out 
that we need each other. We are not able to save ourselves alone just with Jesus. It's quite clear that we're commanded to be one, to depend on one another. It's quite clear that this man, although he was within reach of the source of healing, could not actually benefit from it unless another human being took mercy on him. We are not able to save ourselves alone with Jesus outside of a community of willing and helpful people. And the community of people are willing to take up this as a responsibility to serve each other's needs. Last week, just a few days ago, the clergy of the metropolis of Chicago attended our annual clergy, seen this most clergy gathering, for the purpose of growing in our learning as well as free time and fellowship for the purpose of recreation and restoration. It's really something that we look forward to every year. Our retreat master was a priest by the name of Father Evan Armitus of St. Spiridon Church in Loveland, Colorado. He's an old friend with whom I've had great, great conversations for many years now. Father Evan spoke to us about returning to our responsibility of the Great Commission, that Great Commission from the Lord Jesus Christ to go out into the world and baptize all people, to go out into the world and to bring Jesus Christ to the people and bring Him as risen from the dead. And the truth is that returning to this responsibility of bringing this good news to the world around us is really a great need. He spoke to us about it as really addressing the comprehensive health of our parishes and the fact that that begins with the health of the clergy and all those who are leading various ministries. This is a timely topic for us as Orthodox Christians and for communities of faith overall. Last night here at our church where you are sitting today, we held really an evangelism event at which we specifically invited non-Orthodox friends to come and pray with us and learn just briefly what Orthodox Christianity is. We welcomed them and treated them and sat with them. And what they learned from us is not all the ins and outs of Orthodoxy or all of those rules and habits for a complete Orthodox Christian life, but they learn from us that we are a healing community of people who love and care for each other. People across the Twin Cities, brothers and sisters, are hurting with numerous afflictions and they seek healing. But they need a friend. They need a helpful person to bring them to the source of healing. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only true and complete source of healing. And the Orthodox Christian faith offers a life in that healer, Jesus Christ. And we want to share this with all people. This come and see event held by our Missions and Outreach Committee, however, was not some proselytizing action. No, not at all. 
Nobody was told to become a member. Nobody was given a stewardship pledge form. Nobody was asked to donate any money. It was simply people of our parish bringing their friends to the Sheep Gate Pool, which is called St. Mary's Church, right here in South Minneapolis. We were helpful. That's all. I'm fully aware that for most of us, this type of invitation and action feels difficult, embarrassing, perhaps even feels like we're crossing a line, so to speak. It feels unnatural, yet it is not. Frankly, this is the only way to be the helpful man that the paralytic needed for people who are hungry and thirsty and suffering in their search for meaning in relationship with God that is the helpful hand that brings someone to the healing waters of Jesus Christ. Remember what I pointed out earlier that Jesus Christ healed the man because the paralytic had no man to bring him to the water of the sheep gate pool. All of us brothers and sisters want to identify with the paralytic, don't we? All of us want to identify with the sufferer. All of us see our own problems, and rightly so, they're closer to us. But I suggest, brothers and sisters, that all of us are actually called to identify with the man who did not help the paralytic and realize that we have a responsibility to be there with an outstretched hand. I suggest, brothers and sisters, that instead of the paralytic, each and every one of us has the strength, the wisdom, and God willing, the desire to be that helpful man. The reason I ask you to do this is because as often as I realize that I am failing in my calling to be helpful to my neighbor, I am able to identify once again as often as I change my ways. I am able to identify with Jesus Christ who came as a man to heal the paralytic. Yes, brothers and sisters, you and I continue the work of Jesus Christ as often as we reach and aid a hurting person who desperately needs a helpful man. Amen.